Hello, yogis. I'm Lizzie Lassiter. Today, we're going to do one simple pose to help us open up and let go. Hopefully, you're here because you're subscribed to my Substack newsletter. You can find the link here at lizzie.yoga. It's free, goes out every Sunday. Encouragement to slow down links to these type of videos. Opening up and letting go is one simple definition of yoga. It's also, as I wrote in this week's newsletter, what motherhood feels like right now. I have three-year-old twins who are learning how to ski and watching them ski away from me is a practice of opening up and letting go. The pose we're going to practice together today, we sometimes call instant Maui. The Sanskrit name is Arda Viparita Karani. So it's a slight inversion. The head is below the heart. It's a restorative pose. So we'll stay for about 15 minutes of stillness, darkness, and silence. You'll need an eye mask, something to cover your eyes, and a chair. A bolster would also be wonderful. Please do not practice this pose if you're pregnant. If you have anything going on in the eyes, if you have sinus pressure, if it doesn't feel good, those would be counter indications, counter indications. What are you going to do with your mind after your body gets comfortable in this pose? I'll speak briefly about this and then show the setup. In restorative yoga, we are interested in comfort, making the physical body as comfortable as possible so that we can watch the mind, the spinning mind, sometimes called the monkey mind, the absurd thoughts that we have over and over again. A lot about anticipation for me, planning for the future. Sometimes we get caught in ruminating about the past or replaying, worrying about the past. In restorative yoga, we have the opportunity through stillness and time to begin to drop the low thought and identify with consciousness. So that sometimes is called the watcher, that sense of awareness that lives below thought. That's what we're looking for today. Even if you don't taste that, it's already a victory to take a few minutes of stillness, a little island in your day when you are not producing or consuming. And it is a victory if you are able to begin to see, to watch, to witness the thoughts that you're having. And you can slightly disidentify with the thinking mind and begin to see that your experience of consciousness is much bigger. Shall we move to the mat? Here's the basic setup for instant Maui. A chair, some padding on the chair, a bolster. I'm using a sandbag, which I know not everyone has. You can use a strap or a scarf instead to hold your legs. I'm using a proper Eingar yoga chair which I stole from my mom's basement. In case you don't have access to my mom's basement and you don't have a proper yoga chair, you can use a couch for this. You can lie on the floor and put your legs up on a couch. You can also use a dining room chair. But what you want to make sure is that you have enough space for your feet. You don't want your feet to be hitting the back of the chair. That's why couches are usually nice because they're quite deep. We start by wiggling ourselves onto the bolster. There's going to be some adjusting that takes place. Very important that the backs of the knees are really held by the chair, not that they're hanging in space. So the backs of the knees are held here. Now I'm going to use my sandbag now for weight on the legs, pressing them down into the chair. If you don't have a sandbag or something heavy to put onto your legs, you put a strap and you tie the legs, not together, but you're interested in pulling them down. You can also use a scarf. Then I'm gonna take a blanket and throw it over the top for warmth. The last ingredient is an eye bag or an eye mask or a scarf wrapped around your head. Today I'm using one of my third eye masks, which you can also find at my website, www.lizzy.yoga. I love the masks because they stay in place when you move around, when you go upside down. Okay, so this is important. Let me move the blanket. The position of the bolster underneath the pelvis is important. If you don't have a bolster, 
You don't need to elevate your pelvis. You can do the pose without anything under. You can also use a pillow. If you have a bolster, what you want to do is elevate the pelvis up to the first rib. Once you start to feel ribs here, you don't want it to be in the thoracic spine, which is where the ribs are. It's not a back bend here of the ribs. It's an elevation of the pelvis and the bolster or the support touches the first rib. Ah, ah, okay. So adjust your head. There's no padding or support underneath the head. Slight back flexion of the chin. The arms come wide. And we soften here. Begin with the breath. Letting it grow a little bit deeper. A little bit wider. Almost feel as though the breath is nourishing you. Let's do a few rounds of breath where we emphasize the exhalation. So we're going to inhale to four, counting on your own exhale to six, normal breath in, normal breath out. Inhaling, I'll count with you once, one, two, three, four, and exhale. One, two, three, four, five, six. Normal breath in, normal breath out. So continuing on your own, adjusting the ratio if it's too much for you. A few breaths like this, and then we'll soften into the pose. Let go of the breathing and we'll 
enjoy a few minutes of silence together before I bring you back.
Inhale the breath. And begin to unwind yourself from the pose. Roll to the side. Or you can just lift up and remove the bolster. Press yourself up. Inhale the breath, open the palms away from the heart with an exhalation, bring them together. Namaste. May we live like the lotus at a home in the muddy water. Did you feel it? Thought, consciousness, thought, bodyfulness. The body is a wonderful way into consciousness. Sensations in the body always live in the present moment. Have a great week. And don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter. <laughs>